Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com back with another highly requested video because you guys were like, hey, can you do a comparison between the Canon EOS R5 as well as the Sony a7R4? And yes, yes, I'll do that for you. And I actually already did. Now the idea is to put the highest megapixel camera, mirrorless camera that Canon offers, the R5 versus the Sony a7R4 in a very similar situation. So in this case, we had our model Nina sit in and try to keep the same pose so I could take pictures with the Sony, the Canon, the 85 1.2, which we shot at 1.4, as well as the Sigma 85 1.4 art lens, the DN version. We decided to use that over the G Master because if you watched our review of that lens or the comparison of those, you would have seen that the Sigma is just better. So let's turn in to the first two images. Now they are side by side. They're as, as similar as possible as we could create. One 125th of a second at f1.4 on the Canon side. Even though it's a 1.2 lens, we set it to 1.4 so everything would match. It's at ISO 100. Everything on the Sony side is exactly the same except we're using the Sigma 85 1.4 DG DN lens. Now I'll also remind you, you can download sample raw files of everything that I'm showing you. I'm also going to include one of the similar shots like this taken with the Sony 85G Master so that you can put all three next to each other and you can see for yourself how bad that G Master is wide open at 1.4. So these are unedited images. The whole point of doing this is to give you guys the files so that you can pixel peep them, so that you can take a look at the colors, at the tones, at the clarity, at the bokeh, so that you can decide for yourself do I want to be this Canon shooter? Do I want to be the Sony shooter? Whatever you want to be. My job here is to give you what you need to make a decision for yourself. Uh, you can't go wrong with either of them, by the way, anyway. So here you go. We're zoomed in one to one. The difference here is that we've got a 61 megapixel versus a 45 megapixel camera here. Um, and then we go to three to one and you can see the differences right here. They look very similar when you look three to one in both of these. All right, let's check out the next two shots. I want to go with these two right here because I also went ahead and shot at uh, 400 ISO so that you guys could see higher ISO just a little bit, but these are both at 100. They're not exactly the same image because it's not super easy to replicate the same image at different times during a shoot with two different cameras, but these are pretty darn close. Uh, this time I shot, we have the Canon on the right hand side. I shot this one at 1.2 because I wanted to show it wide open. Also, these are edited exactly the same. The same exposure was added after the fact, so I just tweaked these a little bit just to brighten it up because I seem to be off by a half a stop or a little less. Uh, but I wanted to show you that you could nail it time and time again at 1.2 right on the eye, and this one is with the Sigma 1.4. Let's go in three to one. You got that eye right there. You got that eye right there. Very similar, even though one's the 45 megapixels and one's the 61 megapixels. Uh, you can take a look at the tones. I mean, I'm not seeing a ton of difference right here. You may see a little bit of difference in sharpness, in, in clarity. I mean, you need to figure out which one is right for you. I could use both of them and we will have full on comparisons as soon as we're done with our real world review of the EOS R5. We will go downstairs onto the bowling alley table and we will compare them with tons of check marks, sniff tests and wind tunnel tests to help you decide if you're in the market, which one should you get and why. So here's an image outdoors with Nina taken with the 85 1.4 Sigma on the Sony a7R4. And I wanna show you how Fropac 2 works with it using matte black high contrast. Now with one click, you may be like, well, this doesn't look great, but the whole point is to give you a starting point. All I really need to do here is I'm gonna come in here and brighten it up just a little bit because I was underexposed again. And then I realized that with some of 
the presets that we have here. Grain is added. I'm not a big fan of grain, so I go ahead and take that down to zero. And then I had a really good starting point. So if you're looking for a good starting point or to speed up your raw workflow, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack2. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you get Fropack 1 and Fropack 2 as a Fropack bundle, you can save even more. Now, let's jump back in to the video. So next up, I have this one at 400 ISO from the Canon. So you can see a portrait done at 400 ISO, and it's really interesting to see what happens as you bump the ISO up higher with higher megapixel cameras. I also go ahead and include this one at 400 ISO from the Sony. Now, like I said, they're not exactly the same images, but you can get the idea at 400 to see, does the color look the way you want it to look? Does the clarity and the tones, do the raw files work better in one or the other? Are the highlights better in one or the other? That's for you to figure out. And that's why I go ahead and include a lot of these different images so that you can play with it to see how well these cameras are working. So as a reminder, you can download these raw files. I don't need to go through each individual one and tell you about it. I just wanted to try to give you a good comparison between the EOS R5 and the Sony a7R4 with 85 millimeter lenses. One is the RF at 1.2 and one was the other one at 1.4 because it's the Sigma DN, the DG DN. Download those raw files. Let me know what you think down below. Is there something else you'd like me to test out? Maybe I'll go ahead and do that comparison but this one was about giving you portrait images at 100 ISO and then seeing how they look at 400 with both of these lenses. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polin, Photo.com. See ya.